everybody, Mercury Poisoning here, and welcome back to Pick Your Poison. Poison, 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 poison. Nailed it. We are here today with a very special guest, and we are in their hum humble abode. Words are so difficult, don't you agree? Thank you. Yes, and we're actually going to welcome our special guest here. She is my mother and the mother of all dynasties. Her name is Roxy Malone. Wow. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for agreeing to be on Pick Your Poison with me, Mercury Poisoning. I think she's drunk. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she is. Okay, great. Well, today we are going to make a very special drink, and then we're going to chat a little bit about some... Um, well, first about pageants, and then we'll go on about other things. I know, your favorite song. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah, so um, we are actually making a raspberry lemon drop today. Have you ever Ooh, had one of those? Oh, no. no. Have you had a lemon drop before? I've had a lemon drop before. So it's a lemon drop, but with a raspberry in it. Wow. I know, revolutionary. <laughs> Who would have thought? I know, stunning. <laughs> so first we're going to prep our glasses. So, um... We have gorgeous martini glasses, and then we have some simple syrup that we put a little bit of lemon juice in, and you're just going to get the rim nice and coated there, and then you're going to use this sugar, and we're going to coat that as well. What a and lovely rim job I you did. Know. Oh my god. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. She's a superstar. <laughs> yes. Cue the track. Cue the track. <laughs> I'm a superstar. Okay. So we are going to start um, measuring out everything into our lovely shaker. I've already filled it with ice. Um, and so you need absolute, well, it doesn't have to be absolute because that's not what we're using today. <laughs> anyway, but, um, and they don't endorse me either. But today you have to have a citron vodka. We are using some Smirnoff. Um, you do have to have lemon juice. Um, they prefer that you use a whole lemon. Um, but so much lemon. But we, we are, we're using some lemon juice by real lemon. Listen, quarantine is hard. <laughs> Honestly. You get lemon in a bottle today. Honestly. Um, and then a little bit of sweet and sour, which I'm actually going to make homemade sweet and sour soon. Um, but for now, I've bought some um, light sweet and sour because I'm watching my figure. You can catch her sweet and sour at the local Aldi in about two months. Oh, that's true. <laughs> And, um, and then we have some triple sec that we're going to put in there as well. And we're going to eyeball that one because I don't have a tablespoon. You didn't say this time. one. What's oh, this and one? then this is actually some raspberry liqueur. Um, it is Chambord. Um, they also don't sponsor me, but hey, hit me up, <laughs> If you want to. Huh? Right. <laughs> Holla at your girl. Okay, so we are going to start with the citron. We're going to use two and a half ounces of that. And we're going to pull out our trusty jigger, and we are going to go ahead and measure that out. You probably can't see it because I put all the bottles in the way, but there's one. There's two. So precise. And there's three. Oh, see, there's I would much prefer if you did like that Food Network lady and just eyeballed it. We, we would, but then <laughs> it wouldn't come out right and something would taste really bad. Um, and then we're going to put in two ounces of sweet and sour. Uh, Mama's handmade mix that she bottled herself. Is it sweet or is it sour? You know, it's a nice little mixture of both. <laughs> we call it S and S where I'm from. Not to be confused with S and M. <laughs> Hit me up, Riri. All right. Some rim and glasses, S and M. Oh, yes. And then we're going to use two tablespoons of triple sack. But two. you know, I don't have. A, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try to open this? <laughs> Wow! What a woman. <laughs> you loosened it for me. Oh, God. Such, a, <laughs> such a man. <laughs> yes, and we are using two tablespoons of this, and we have our trusty tablespoon right here. So, that looks like some. That looks like one, <laughs> two, yeah, two. A little more. One little, to grow one. Little, one to grow one. Little, okay, there we go. We got a little extra triple sec in there. But we're doing great. And then we need lemon juice, which we need a whole lemon. So we're gonna put a whole, we're gonna put a whole lemon in here. Okay, count with me. Do you see that lemon? Do you see it? There's a whole lemon. Where'd you get your lemon from? Is that one of those little cutie lemons? Hold up, no. Hold up. You want more? She, you said she, that's a lemon. I did not. I squeezed that. Oh. You're drinking for two, not for one. <laughs> Three if you count me. 
Are you saying that right? <laughs> now it's time to shake. Are you ready to shake? Go ahead. You ready to shake? Come on. You, you gotta, gotta shake with me. You rimmed it, you poured it, you shake it. <laughs> you gotta shake it. Shake it. Yeah, shake it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right there, right there, right there. Oh yeah, right in there. Yeah. Oh, that was a satisfying pop right there. Ding. <laughs> Okay, and then um, I don't know if this actually makes one or two beverages, but I think it's strong <laughs> enough that we're gonna make it into two instead of mixing one of each for both. Why'd you feel? I'm kidding there. Oh, oh, she did good. She did good. She did good. See, look at that. Those are almost even. Even Steven, lemon squeezing. Lord help me. All right, and then now you top it off with this nice little Chambord raspberry liqueur. So, um, we're going to go ahead and you just pour, there's an actual measurement, it's like half an ounce, um, but I just pour a little bit and you pour it right over here, and then it's going <gasps> to fill up the bottom, and it's got a nice little layer to fill. Oh, look at that! So bougie! Yes. And it's got a nice little effect, and there is our beverage. Wow! Stunning. Can I yeah. be a bartender now? Well, that's the whole goal, I mean. <laughs> To quit everything else and just become a bartender, so. All right, well, do you want to try it? Yeah. Should we take pictures? I need to fuck pictures. Okay. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh! The extra shot of lemon that I put in there seals the deal. <laughs> I don't think that's what did it. It was me. <laughs> Tastes good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to chug it? No. While on YouTube, let's go. I don't recommend doing this. <laughs> I don't want to check it either. We got to talk still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if whatever we have left at the end, we'll talk. This is cocktail hour. I'm sorry. Oh, right. I'm not so, so sorry. This isn't um, college, okay? What to talk about? So, I, uh, well, the first thing I want to talk about is specifically pageants. So, you are, a, well, part of you is a pageant queen. That's not all you do. That's all I do. That's not true. <laughs> but you are our rainy. Let's see if she gets this wrong. <laughs> Miss Gay St. Louis, Missouri, America. Correct! Nailed it! She got the gold star. It's yeah, the, she did. It's the vodka. It's, it's something. Or the tequila I had earlier. <laughs> Don't tell my <laughs> So anyway, so that is your most recent title. So what exactly does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? <laughs> it can mean a lot of, I don't. So it's a title. So you Please can try it. Again. So you can. <laughs> She's so mean to me. You all are going to let her sit here and abuse me? They've seen every Friday at Leo. <laughs> Every other, other Friday at Leo's Pub and Grill on First Capital in St. Charles. Catch Mercury poisoning and I. Ding. <laughs> yeah, no, so um, you recently competed, and by recently I mean that was a minute ago because COVID unfortunately got in the way of things. Last October. Yeah, so you competed in October. What exactly happens during a pageant, like as far as competing wise? So whenever you compete in a pageant, you usually for the America system, which is what I'm a part of, you compete in four categories. Yes. You compete in male interview, which is the only time that the judges see you as a boy. Um, so it's out of drag. Out of drag. Yeah. It's during the day, so before anything of the pageant happens. Okay. Um, so that's, it's like a formal job interview. So they're going to sit down, they're going to ask you questions about who you are as a person, what you're looking for, kind of gauge where you're at. Okay. And then after that, everybody gets in drag, pageant happens, um, the first category you'll compete in for a city preliminary is typically evening gown. Um, evening gown is whenever they want to see the high glitz, high glamour, high beautiful woman. Polish. Polish. Okay. Um, after that, you compete in an onstage question, which I actually have an onstage question for Mercury that she didn't know about. Oh, oh God. <laughs> to be the reigning miss, pick your poison. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You tried to take my show from me already. <laughs> it's only the second episode. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the onstage question is just how quick can you think on your feet? 
they ask you any question that any former or any person wanted to put in that the promoter of the pageant wanted. So, okay, so let me get this straight. So as far as that question, mm -hmm. you said any previous winner mm -hmm. and any anybody else yeah, so the could promoter, also submit questions. The promoter of the pageant will pick who they want to submit questions. Okay. Typically, it's by people who have either been around the system, in the system, won, won things, won other systems. Gotcha. Basically, people who are already kind of in the know of what questions yeah. to ask. Um, the only thing is it cannot be political. That's... Good, probably. Yeah. Probably. Same for interview. They cannot ask you any political questions in interview unless you bring it up. Oh, okay. So if you bring it up, fair game. So don't bring it up. Yeah. Good. Um, after that, you compete in talent, which is the biggest portion of the entire pageant. Um, yeah. It's over half your score. So, yeah. It's, um, and that's where they want to see a production. So with mine, what I did whenever I won Miss St. Louis was I did my Ursula talent again. Yeah. Um, which... If you want to see it, follow me on Facebook. Ding! Um, and that's it. And then after that, everybody comes back and they do crowning and then they announce the winner. Okay, so then um, you've won now. So then what's the next step? Like, does it end there or is there more? So that is the first step. So winning a city preliminary is the first step okay. in the America system. Um, from there, I will go compete for Miss Game Missouri America whenever Miss Rona decides she wants to end her reign and let that us outside bitch. again. Anyways, um, and then from there, all of us will go and compete to be Miss Missouri America. Whoever wins or places first alternate from there will go on to compete at nationals to be Miss Gay America. That's amazing. So, so it's preliminary, like city preliminary, mm -hmm. so like Miss Gay St. Louis, and then Miss Gay Missouri, mm -hmm. and then Miss Gay America. Yep. Is there anything after Miss Gay America? There is not. Okay. Not in the America system. Gotcha. Um, there are other options in the America system if you don't have a state preliminary that's by you. Um, they're called regional preliminaries, where they are direct into the national. Gotcha. So, like, for example, if somebody already won Miss Missouri America, but they want to go back to a Miss America, they can go compete at a regional to get their spot back to go nice. compete again. Awesome. And so, then what brought you to drag pageants, specifically? <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> um, so, if you... Uh, there's kind of a stigma between pageants, and I really try to, or I really want to still try to break that stigma. Okay, what's that? Um, so the stigma is all pageant girls are uppity, they're bitchy, they're, they're know-it-all, they're too good for everybody, and that's not necessarily the case. Am I saying that there aren't those kind of girls? I know, have you met you? <laughs> she wants to get disowned. <laughs> Oh, please don't do that. I've already been that. I've already been on the corner once or twice. I don't need to go back. Um, but really I just think that pageant girls are a lot misunderstood. Yeah. Um, because we take what we do very seriously and it's not well respected with all forms of drag and but on the flip side, some pageant girls don't respect that other side of drag and that's where I feel I belong. Yeah. To fuse those two together. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you host a show mm -hmm. every Tuesday at the Gray Fox Ding. called <laughs> See You Next, Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Trademarked. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I wish. <laughs> maybe soon. Who knows? Um, but you do that, and it, it really does celebrate all forms of drag because you don't just have queens come that are considered, you know, your typical, like, pageant queens or um, just, like... We didn't want pageant old queens, drag. we didn't want alternative. I, I think old drag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the purpose of See You Next Tuesday was to help St. Louis bridge that gap, and it was just the start. Um, we've been doing it for two years now, and it seems yeah. to be very successful. A lot of people love it. Thank you. Um, catch us back whenever <laughs> she leaves. She didn't leave. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That was like a weird flushing sound, like an automated flushing sound in the future. So shit went down the toilet, aka Miss Rona. <laughs> Bye, girl. Coming soon. Yeah, right. And if you want, if you want to see how I got rid of her, check out my first video. <laughs> I gotta mean back in. What's Mercury's next goal? Because I oh, know, God. I know with Mercury poisoning, if you know her, she's been stuck in St. Charles, and she won't branch out. <laughs> I am curious to know after Miss Rona leaves, what are your next steps? An on-stage question. I'll, I'll, I'll await your appropriate response. 
<laughs> so, um, I don't know. What's next for Mercury? So, I mean, this recording, not just this one, but just, like, pick your poison in general, has been something I've been thinking about talking about for quite, quite a while. As, as my mother knows, I have talked to you about it a lot, um, about wanting to do it and getting feedback from you and um, getting advice on, on what to do and, and everything. But, so this was a big step, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, I do... I mean, if anyone can see that, I do think I have something great going here. Um, as you know, as long as I keep up with it and you know hold myself to continuing this. Yeah. Um, but I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't know what's next, honestly. Um, I want well, sometimes you know I want to get out. I um, and be in the city more because I mean it is a little bit further from not a little bit further. It's only thirty minutes, but it just sometimes it feels like forever, especially when you work all day. Um, eight to five, and then you have to go get in the drag and then drive all the way to the city mm -hmm. too. Um, sometimes it feels like a lot, um, and it can be very overwhelming. But I mean, I, I don't, I, I really don't know. Like pageants interest me to a highest degree, um, but I don't. Well, one, I don't feel like I'm ready. Um, but also, you never know if you're ready unless you go mm -hmm. for it. So it's one of those things where at some point I'm just going to have to take a leap and I'm just going to have to do it and I'm just going to have to get all that terrible feedback that I don't want to hear but I need to hear. I'm aware. I'm self-aware <laughs> um, of these things, you know, and, and move on but, uh, and, and grow from it and learn and get better. But I really don't know. Like you say stuck in St. Charles, which is low-key true. Not low, It's not true per se that I'm stuck. I could move if I wanted to. But it's more... I'm not ready to leave what's comfortable mm -hmm. yet. And so um, that, like, the thought of going somewhere else and then kind of having to start... Like start over. Start over, yeah. And, I mean, start over in my personal life, start over in drag, where I'm like, okay, now I have to prove myself to a bunch of new people. Mm -hmm. It's like, nobody cares that I'm Mercury. You know, like, if I go somewhere else, nobody cares that I'm Mercury poisoning from St. Charles bumfuck nowhere. And... Um, I just started at the time. <laughs> Bum crap nowhere, excuse me, sorry mom. And um, you know, from there and I started two shows, whoop de doo, what does that mean? But I will say, as far as like trying to be confident about things, um, I'm still getting better at that and still working on it, trying to do better at that. But there is one thing that I still hear, even if I'm I don't fully believe it, is that there's something about me that when people meet me, and this sounds really conceited, I'm so sorry, um, but when people meet me, they're just like, oh, there's something about you. Whether I actually have talent or not, I don't know, but like, there's just things where people talk, right, there's just <laughs> things where people talk to me and they're just like, you're just like a genuinely good person, and that feels good to hear, even though I don't believe them, because I feel like I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I'm just, am I right or am I right? Um, Welcome to Mercury Poisoning's <laughs> first therapy appointment. <laughs> It's true. We'll edit all of this out. Um, no, we probably will. And it's... <laughs> and I don't know. It's just... Uh, like, that like keeps me going. So, like, that's the thought. Like, if I did go somewhere, like... You know, initially it may be hard, it may seem scary, but, like, you just do it, and, like, you'll find people that are just like, oh, yeah, I see that, like, what other people have told me that they see that I don't see. Um... Somebody else, I'm sure, will say, be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And, like, I want to see more of you. And, like, I mean, this is what you got to do. So um, I'm done with my drink. And you just finished here. So there's no chugging that can happen unless we make more. <laughs> I mean, we honestly, I probably will. Because, like, hey, these are really good. So, um, Roxy, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being my mom. Like, I know this sounds really savvy, but I seriously <laughs> thank you so much. Um, it really means a lot, and I don't want to cry on air, so, like, we're not going to do that whole thing, but, like, you really have done so much for me, and I so super, super, super so much appreciate it, and I absolutely love you, and if I say any more, I'm going to cry, so, like, just pretend that I didn't have this moment. Let's keep going. Make her cry. <laughs> no, we're not going to make her cry. If you want to see me cry, you can go to my channel, and I'll record an episode. It'll be on the bloopers reel. Oh, right, it'll be on the bloopers reel. And then I will record a number of me doing High School Musical, the musical, the series. So, uh, because I will really cry. Yes, wondering, because I will cry during that. So, well, thank um, you for having me. Oh my gosh, of course. Thank you for letting me take over this lovely Australian <laughs> open air kitchen. 